So in this video, what I want to do is to derive this formula for the sine of a plus b in terms of the trigonometric functions of the individual angles. And to do that, what I'm going to do is to consider two right angle triangles with angles a and b, and I have scaled them deliberately in such a way that this side and this side have the same length. And that's something I can always do and I'm going to call that little h. So these are identically long. And that means that I can take this triangle and just move it this way so that these sides will join seamlessly and I will have a larger triangle with angle a plus b. And that's what I have drawn here. Now this side is the same as this side so let me give it a name. I'm going to call it p, little p. And similarly, this side is the same as this side, so I will give it a name, and I'm going to call it little q. The strategy we're going to take is to calculate the area of this triangle, which is clearly going to involve trigonometric functions of the angle A, and this triangle as well, so we can get trigonometric functions of the angle B. But the, the sum of the areas of these two triangles is going to be equal to the area of this larger triangle. And this triangle, we can work out its area in terms of the angle A plus B. So let's start with that, see how we can get this, and then come back to these two triangles. And to do it, what we're going to do is we're going to drop a perpendicular here so that this is a right angle triangle and we are going to use the standard formula for the area of a triangle that the area is equal to a half the base times the height. Now, in this triangle, I'm going to view this as the base and this as the height. So the base is easy, that's Q, so we're going to write a half Q. And what about the height? Well, I don't know what this is exactly. It's not the same as little h. So let me just give it a name. I'm going to call it capital H. So our area is a half, the base is Q, and the height is capital H. Now, I want to express this in terms of the sine of A plus B, and that is easy here because this is a right angle triangle, and H is the opposite to that, so H over P is the sine of A plus B. So H is P times the sine of a plus b. So our total area for this larger triangle is a half q p sine of a plus b. So this is our total area and it is expressed in terms of the sine of a plus b and the sides of the triangle which are also present in these triangles. So let's come back to here and calculate now the area, AT, as the sum of the areas of each of the triangles. So I'm using an obvious notation here, which is that A1 is the area of this triangle and A2 is the area of this triangle. So let me just write that down. This is has triangle has area A1. This triangle has area A2. So, the area here is again a half the base times the height. And the height is little h, and the base is this side. And I've chosen to do it this way, of course you can do it in other ways. So, here we have a half, and we have the base, and little h is the height. So what 
is the base here. Well, this over P is the sine of A. So this length is P times the sine of A. And we can do exactly the same for the second triangle, and we get a half, little h is the base, sorry, is the height, and the base is q times the sine of b. So it's q sine b times little h. And now, if we look at these expressions, look at this, and remember what we are trying to prove, we see that here we have the sine of a, but we would like to see something involving b, the cosine of b, multiplying here. And now we come back to the key moment at the start of the video where we said that the triangles had been scaled such that their heights were the same, and that allowed us to join them together to form this triangle. So I can actually use here for h this triangle involving the angle B, and here I can write h in terms of the angle A using this triangle. And in that way I can get sine of A times cos of B and sine of B times cos of A emerging. So we have a half P sine A times the height, but now I'm going to use for the height this triangle, and h over q is the cosine of b, so h is q cos b. So we have q cos b plus a half q sine b, and now we rewrite the h here using this triangle as p times the cosine of a. So it's p cos a. So now we have two expressions which we can equate. So we are going to equate these area expressions. And we notice that there are common factors everywhere of a half qp. So there's a half here and a half here. There's a p multiplying this and a q multiplying it. A q and a p multiplying all of this. So we cancel the half p q common factors and we obtain that here we have a sine of a plus b and on this side we have a sine A times cos B plus a sine B times cos A. So that is sine A cos B plus, and now it's sine B cos A, and I'm just going to put the expression with A in front of the expression with B. So we have cos A times, just squeezing it in here, sine of b. And that is exactly the expression we wanted to derive. So we started off with two right angle triangles and they'd been scaled in such a way that they had the same common side here that we've been treating as the height put them together to form a bigger triangle and the sum of these areas must be this area. We use the area of a triangle as half the base times the height and on this side the key thing to spot 
was that although we write the base in terms of the angle A, we write the height in terms of the angle B, and vice versa down here for this triangle. And with that, this formula drops out.